Hey guys, I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm gonna show you a few items that you can make and actually sell using the Five Miles app. Now, what exactly is that? Five Miles is an app that you can download from the Apple market and the Android market. And the best part about it, you can buy and sell directly from your phone. And one of the best things about it is you can receive in-app payment which let your transaction go a whole lot easier. But enough about that, let's get to making. And first up, I'm gonna show you how to make some concrete candle holders. Let's start by covering the materials I used in this project. I started out using a three inch PVC repair coupler. I also used two inch candles and glass candle holders. Last but not least, you'll need some sand and cement mix, along with water and a mixing bowl. Now let's get started. I'm gonna start by placing the aluminum foil down, sit the coupler on top of it, and then hot glue the perimeter of it so that it sits into place. Now fold the edge of the aluminum foil up so that it's out of the way. Be sure to wipe and clean the interior of the PVC coupler. Now I'm going to add mold release wax to the interior of the PVC. You can also use oil. This should help with the release process after the concrete has cured. I'm going to mix the concrete with a 2 to 1 ratio. For this mix I'm going to use 1 spoon of cement mix and 2 spoon of sand. Now apply small amounts of water and only add water as needed. If the cement mix is too watery, just add more mix. If it's too dry, just add more water. Mixing concrete is simple. All you need to do is add water to it. Just keep it manageable. Now you can take masking tape and wrap the upper portion of the glass. Anything below the tape will be down in the concrete. You may have to do a few test tries before you get the right amount of concrete. Simply sit the glass in the mix and try to keep the lip of the glass flush to the top of the coupler and also have the cement rise to the bottom of the tape. Now place tape across the glass so that you have it centered and then just double check for spacing around the glass. And to remove any air pockets what you want to do in this case is you can hammer the outside of the coupler or you can use a sander to vibrate the form. Now let's remove the aluminum foil and you can just do that by peeling it off. I'm also going to use the heat gun to soften up the glue around the perimeter. This way I can remove all of it from the form. Anything we can remove from the form I would suggest that this way you don't have anything helping the concrete to stay bonded to the PVC coupler. Next I'm going to use the heat gun once more just to soften up the PVC slightly. Now I can take the mallet and pound the outside just to loosen up the concrete and try to create some separation. Now take the handle and just push towards the concrete and then it should come right out of the form. My suggestion is you leave the tape on until you're done sanding. I was a bit impatient so I took it off right away. Only thing needs to be sanded on these forms is just the bottom and also the top lip. But pretty much everything's already smooth as it needs to be. So I'm just going to take a sander or a sanding pad and just round off just the top edge. The glass cleanup is rather easy. Just take a wet napkin and just wipe around the glass and you should see all the haze come off the glass. Add a few felt pads to protect any surface you wish to place these on. Now you can style these however you want. You can paint them. You can also add dye to your mix or you can just leave them as it is. Now you can dress these up however you want. I'm going to add twine to one of them just to make it a little more interesting. Just use hot glue to secure it into place and just like that we have a finished product. Those candle holders were pretty slick, right? Now I like the way those came out, but what if you made a ton of those and you had a hard time selling them? Well, no worries because with the Five Miles app, what you could do is you could put some of those items on sale and then if they're not moving the way you expected or maybe you priced them a bit high, what you could do is put them on sale and then see what happens. You know people love sales, including myself. We all run for the sale. So if you do that, basically you can gauge what your market is in your area and then you can go from there. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take some artificial plants and turn those into decorative goodness. For this video, I'm going to make decorative planters using artificial plants and I have links down in the video description for a large variety of options. I'm going to use scrap mahogany cutoffs, but you can use any wood or any material of your choice. Just think of any size you desire, then cut the wood down to size. If you're planning to make a batch, then aim to be efficient. Make sure all the cuts that are supposed to be the same are made before moving the saw fence. For this design, I set the blade to a 45 degree angle and then I cut off all the corners.
With this design, I started by making it square. Then I set the blade to a 15 degree angle, which allowed me to taper off the bottom. Some of these projects are doable with a handsaw, but of course if you have a table saw or a miter saw, these projects become a whole lot easier. If you're only making a couple of these, then a handsaw is probably not a bad thing, but if you're looking to make a batch, then just get ready for a workout. And to create more interest to your piece, you can also use the miter box to cut angles. And of course, if you have a miter saw, you're more than welcome to put it to use. And now I'm gonna use a router with a round over bit to create a saw flip going around the top and also on the bottom. And you can do this to all your pieces, but if you don't have a router or you're afraid to use a router, you can also use a sander and just round over the edge slightly and that way you give it a soft touch as well. Now once you find the center of your planter, you can then drill a hole big enough to fit the stem of your plant. And these was a bit tall for my liking, but you can cut them down to your desired height. Now if you happen to drill a hole that was a bit too big, you can always use hot glue to hold it into place. This planter is going to be a bit different from the rest. I'm just going to find the center of this one, and I'll be drilling a 2 inch hole right in the center. When you're using a hole saw, especially for a situation like this, it's important to use a vacuum to remove the sawdust as it get created. The sawdust put a lot of pressure on the wood, which caused the bit to get hot and burn the wood. This one required a little more effort, but I was happy with the end result, so it's all worth it. The hole saw don't have the depth to go all the way through, so what we have to do is drill down, remove this section, and then drill down again before we go all the way through. And this is what it looks like with the hole going through the middle. I like it. And now I'm gonna drill down so the artificial plant can go through the hole. I was having a bit of a debate with myself whether or not to go all the way through. I wasn't sure if I wanted to see the stem of the tree going all the way down, but I took a gamble anyways. And to make this feel even more professional, I'm gonna round over the hole using the router. And to sand out the hole, I'm gonna use this sanding drum kit to do so. Now sand all the pieces down, get them prepped and ready to take a finish. And for this piece, I'm gonna add Danish oil on it. Pretty simple to apply. Just use a rag, wipe it on, and then soak in the wood. Now I'll do a few pieces like this. You can paint a couple and also add clear coat to some. And with the finishing touch on this, let's get a closer look to the end results. Now I'm pretty sure that some of these items will totally enhance a couple areas in your home. And if you're looking for maximum profit, you're gonna wanna have options. And that's the main reason why I gave you many different ways to make these. And hopefully some of these spark some other inspiration for you that you can actually add to the bundle. Now, another nice feature to the Five Miles app is that you can totally sell your stuff and keep your information private. So no one would ever know all your personal information. And I think that's a great plus when it comes to doing this because now you can go back and forth with somebody and they never know anything about you. All you guys do is set up a spot that you can meet and exchange items and cash. For this next project, I'm gonna be making a magnetic mount accent lamp. The material list here is pretty simple. All you need is battery powered LEDs, magnet, piece of metal plate, and also a six inch piece of wood. And I'll have links down in the video description. To prevent any tear outs, use masking tape before you cut, and you should have four identical pieces. If you're careful, you can drill out just enough material to sit the magnet down in the hole. The other option is to surface mount the magnet on the back. Since the lamp is lightweight and small, I'm only gonna use wood glue to join it together. Now I thought about miter in the box, but since this is solid oak and not layered ply, by the time you put it all together, the line will virtually disappear. 
The stickiness of the glue should hold this box together, allowing you enough time to put your clamps on. After the clamps are on, be sure to check for squaring and remove all the excessive glue. Allow enough time for the glue to dry and then we can move on to sanding it down. Use 120 grit to lightly sand around the perimeter and also the end grains and also sand the joint areas. After the first pass through, come back with 220 grit sandpaper. Then take a wet rag, wipe the box so all the grains stand up, then sand once more. Now these colors are all going to be based on preference. I've tried six test colors and four of them actually look the same. So I'm just going to go with the Danish oil because this one applies quicker and it has the fastest drying time. The light should be attached on the inside of the front panel. To install the lights, I'm going to dab a bit of hot glue on them, hold it in place, allow the glue to dry, and I'll just go back and forth all the way down. Here's a shot. I started from the top, then I made sure I went to the bottom, and then I worked my way back to the middle. And I did that because I want to make sure I didn't have more light up top than I did at the bottom. Now hot glue the power pack onto the side and make sure the switch is facing the bottom. Now drill out a few holes for the screw to pass through to keep the magnet attached. To get an even cleaner look, you can use epoxy and epoxy the magnet on the back side. So if you look down into the lamp, all you'll see is the two nuts that's holding the screw on. But if you go with epoxy, you see nothing. And if you remember my last bed video, you can even attach this to the headboard for an accent light as well. Although this is not a permanent installation here, you can see that it does give off a really nice effect at nighttime. If you're planning to use the magnetic feature all the time, I would suggest you use all four mounting holes in the corner. This way you get a solid mount. Any plate would work for this application. I just happened to grab the cheapest one I can find. These magnets are rated for 11 pounds of force, so I'm confident that this should hold on to it just fine. I'd say that looks pretty good with the wall mounted desk. I really enjoyed making this lamp. I thought it was super cool and I also thought it was really simple to make. And I think anybody can do it with basic hand tools. I've seen some improvements that I couldn't make along the way as well. So don't be surprised if you see a version two in a future video. And if you're looking for more information on the things that I've made in this video and you like to get links to those, be sure to check the video description. I have all that down there. And if I can't find it, I'll tell you where you could possibly get it. And while you're down there, make sure you check out the Five Miles app as well. They'll have a link down in the video description. So if you check that out and maybe you can get rid of some of the things you have and you don't want in your life anymore, or you can make some of these cool DIY projects and you can sell them to make a few bucks. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video.